Hello, my friend. I'm so glad that you're tuned in and a subscriber to this particular YouTube channel and that you're listening to these messages. And I, I trust and pray that I'm a blessing to you and able to be able to give you some truths. I'd sure like to hear from you about that. If, if you would take the time just to comment, uh, if God speaks to you at any time at all through any of the things that are said on this particular channel, from these messages that God has given to me to give to you. And I trust that there'll be a blessing to you. Now, as you know, I've been doing some messages and studying on the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us. And I've also spoken, as you also know, that I've spoken about the, the fact that the Holy Spirit is associated as a symbol of a river. Now, let me just say this. It's very clear that God has various things of nature and life to compare with himself and not only just with himself as God the Father and God the Son, but also he compares himself as the one of God the Holy Spirit. Now, remember he, how he's compared himself as a bridegroom, and uh, we, we've talked about that some. We'll talk more about it later. Uh, he's compared himself as a shepherd. He's compared himself even as a mother. Uh, in Isaiah, the last chapter there, he, he compares himself as a mother that comforts. And he compares himself as a father, as a father that pitieth his children. And he compared himself even as a hen that gathered the little chicks under her wings. You know all of these comparisons. He even compared himself with, a, with an eagle and so forth. But listen, his reason for comparing himself are, is for our benefit because we can understand him and what he's trying to accomplish by him comparing himself to different things that we're familiar with. It's a way of working uh, his person and personality and his ministry to us generally. And so we can see him being, being the ones that he compares himself to actually applying to our own lives. Boy, that's a blessing to me. And we've seen definite comparisons. I mean, he's made the Holy Spirit to be a comforter. He's even said that he's going to send another comforter. He's made him to be wind. I've talked to you about the seal. I'm going to give you some more thoughts about the water, not in this particular message, but later on, I'll give you some thoughts about how he compares the Holy Spirit to water. And I know the Lord would lift the spiritual scales from our eyes, even right now. As we're talking about this particular message on how he compares the Holy Spirit to himself as a river. And we've talked a little bit about that, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about it. Because the river is to be flowing, it's to be moving, it's to be generating, and to be giving life. And we have that flow of that river in us. Because John 7, Jesus himself said, that out of your belly, talking to the Christian, shall flow rivers of living water. How's your flow today? Not only for you and how a river does what it does for a person, but the flow to others and what it does for them when you come in contact with them. All of us are familiar with the river, but let me give you some thoughts here. Let's both scripturally and logically see how and why God compares the Holy Spirit to a river. I'm talking about the one that's dwelling in you as a Christian. I'm talking about the one that's dwelling in me. How does he compare himself to a river? And why does he compare himself that's flowing through us as a river? First, let me think about this with you. Every river... Do your own study, find it on out, and just logically think about it. But every river has a proper head. In other words, a fountain from where it proceeds. Where it comes from. Every river has a beginning. It has a head from where it starts. The Jordan River, for example, that you read about in your Bible, begins from Mount Hermon and flows all the way through Israel. And all along its banks, as it flows, it's producing milk and honey. 
a land that's filled with milk because of all the animals and honey because of all the fruit trees and the blossoms that the bees come and make the honey with, that it's flowing with milk. So I'm simply saying every river has a head, its origin, where it comes from. Well, the Bible informs us the Holy Spirit, Spirit proceeds from the Father. He's the head of the river of life. He tells us that in John chapter 15, verse number 26. He tells us that in Revelation chapter 22, verse number 1, that the Holy Spirit comes from him. Jesus himself said to his disciples, which we are, by the way, too, he said, if you, if you remember this, I, I'm going to go, but I will send to you my Holy Spirit. So who is it that provides the river of the Spirit that flows through us? <laughs> the head is Jesus. We have his, Jesus's spirit. The river comes from him. And the Holy Spirit that's in us is Christ's spirit. Now, secondly, not only does every river have a proper head, but every river, get this now, has much water in it. It's not a cistern, it's not a vessel, it's not a little small stream, it's not a creek. And, and it, it, I mean, it doesn't, it's not something of small quantities. A river contains an abundance of water that keeps it flowing, and it can never be emptied because it's a constant flow. You cannot empty a river that once it has originated, and they have originated, it's a constant flow. And you'll notice God refers the Holy Spirit being a river and not a creek, not a stream, not a vessel, not a cistern. Why? Because a river speaks of the fullness of its banks, the fullness of life, which is it. And I am the banks. I am the one that the river flows through, and so are you if you're a Christian. And that means that the river has much water. In other words, you can have the total, complete fullness of the water of the river of the Holy Ghost flowing through you. You can have the full flow. In fact, it's a command that we do to be filled with that river, to be filled in the banks of our body, our temple, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Very plain it is. The abundance of heavenly blessings flow from the river out of the throne of God by the Holy Spirit to us. Think of it. All the Christians in all ages from the beginning of the world have been supplied from this river. Think of now, think now with me. Millions have drawn out of it and have been filled with it. And yet today in 2021, there's still an ample supply. But from the time that the Holy Spirit was first given to man, man by the millions have been accessible to it. And yet there's an abundant supply. It has not been diminished at all. It's still there for the fullness and you can have as much of the holy spirit as the apostle paul in fact you can have as much as the holy spirit of jesus christ it's available it's not limited you can have the fullness thank god for the thought that the, the river has much water in it and the holy spirit has much fullness of him in the banks of our our being there's no emptying of its supply it's never to be diminished not a drop at all. There's always that river flowing. Now here's something else. A river is open. I love this. A river is open and free to all. Every person who passes by can make use of a river if he needs to be. A river can be used to wash. It can be used to drink. It can be uh, used to fish. It can be used to swim. I mean, a river is free to all. As a matter of fact, a river sometimes will flow. I don't know if you knew this or not. Maybe I shouldn't even tell you. But a river will flow through somebody's property that is private property, but the river flows through that private property. Well, guess what? If you want to be able to go through that private property, if you go and wade and stay in the river until you get past or through or where you want to be, if you'll stay in the river, 
that river does not belong to anybody. They cannot personally possess and own the river, but they can, but you can have access to that river regardless of where it's flowing. Simply to say this, the Holy Spirit is the river and it's open and free to all. Nobody can stop us from having access to that river. And thank God, that's what the Lord has done for us. The river, it's a flowing thing through you and through me. And I don't know about you, but as it flows, I think there are, there are nine different rivers that's to flow through us. And that's why he gives us the quantity of rivers uh, in the plural. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You know why I believe that's true? I believe because there are nine rivers that flow through every Christian. There's the river of love. There's the river of joy. There's the river of peace. And all the fruits of the Spirit are those rivers that flow through us. And they're supposed to flow from in us out to others. We're supposed to be the river flowing out to others. Bearing fruit as a river would on its banks. We are too. Now, here's something else. Many natural rivers are very deep, yet in some places they are shallow, and a person may even wade in them in the shallow places. But the deep places with terrific currents could be dangerous. Sometimes signs and boundaries are set, given notice of the dangers of the deepness of that particular area of that river. Now the spiritual river, that we're talking about. The Holy Spirit is wonderfully deep, and Romans says he searches the deep things of God. You can find that in Romans 8, 27, or in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse number six, uh, verse number 10. He searcheth the deep, deep, deep things of God. There are some purposes and decrees, secret uh, uh, secret ways of the spirit unknown to us yet some of his ways and his influences and operations are understood if we'll just be willing to go deep enough into the holy spirit to learn them thank god for this i'm telling you i don't know about you but this this blesses my heart we as christians can and should go as far as our boundaries and limits permit and we must not pry into those areas god has set for boundaries too deep too dangerous God's word shows us the depths that we should go to and the depths of knowing him and his dwelling in us. In other words, being led, that's a depth. Being filled, that's a depth. Bearing his fruit and producing his fruit, that's a, that, that, that's a depth. And also being able to use his gifts, that's a depth. Don't, listen, don't adventure any further or any danger than what the word of God has already given to us, but let's go as deep as the word of God is. Thank God for that. I'm telling you the truth. A river is the natural place of fish and many other creatures. For example, a river has turtles and frogs and ducks and whatever, and these are all produced by the river, and they live in it. The Holy Spirit is the natural place for all Christians. As much as these things that are natural to a, a regular flowing, watery river, we who have the flowing of the Holy Spirit's river through us, we have that place where the Christians are to be born of the Spirit, they're to live by the Spirit, they're to walk in the Spirit, and we're to be like a river that produces fish. We, by the Spirit, are to be fishers of men. Amen? Is that what the Bible says? Of course it is. So we're supposed to do what the Word of God says. Here's the sixth thing. A river constantly cleanses itself of filth and pollution. It flows so it carries away all trash it receives. Hallelujah! The flow of the river of God carries away filth, carries away, I mean, you just go by and you throw in a, a McDonald's cup and if the river's flowing, that McDonald's cup will disappear. It'll take it away. The trash will be taken out by the flow of the river. Well, in you and me, there's a flow of the river of the Holy Spirit. And when the trash comes in us, we have the ability to have the river of the Holy Spirit flow it out from us. Thank God for that. Now get this truth. There, a river has its banks to keep it in proper bounds and running in its own channel. In other words, so people know 
where they can go at any time to benefit of its waters. And so if you're flowing with the fullness of the Holy Spirit's river, people will know it and they'll take advantage sometimes of knowing they can come to you and get, to, get from you the things that are necessary for them because they know that the river of the Holy Spirit flowing through you is available for you to give to them what's needed at the time they need it. The Holy Spirit has its proper bounds and always runs in its spiritual channels. Here's something else. Some rivers overflow their banks at certain times. And when they do, they greatly enrich the soil and make it fruitful. The Nile was famous for this. Now listen to me. I want you to get this. The river overflows their banks at certain times. Now listen. The spiritual river occasionally in us overflows. And because of that, many are enriched. Many are enriched by one who is filled with the overflowing of the Holy Spirit. I've been able to be able to see folks that were blessed when I have been in the position of being around somebody when I was filled with the Holy Spirit to the point that they were attracted to come and even speak to me and ask me, knowing full well they, I may have not have ever met them and they may have never met me, but they have come to me and I've had them say to me, my wife, I wish she were here to even back up this, this testimony right here because she's been with me. When I've had people come up and say to me, you look like a preacher. Are you a preacher? I'd say yes. And they would say at times, we could tell. And you being a preacher, can you answer a couple of questions for me? And I've had the opportunity of helping people and even leading others to Christ because of the flow of that river. That river that overflows, it overflows to the banks, its banks to someone else. Look, God has given to us a great truth about we have the river flowing within us. Here's something else. Many rivers are profitable for commerce, for traffic, even for ferries. Rivers then are the means of transporting expensive items from one city to another by which people and other cities are helped. You can take the Great River Thames in London, that's an example, or our own uh, River Mississippi, that's an example, and, and Missouri River, by these rivers, our friends, uh, and, and you can see that they, they are used to transport even commerce or things to other people that will help other people, such as groceries or automobiles or steel or iron or even buildings are floated down rivers to other places. And other places are benefited by the flow of a river. Well, bless your little pea picking heart. Don't you think the Lord gave to us the flowing of the river so that we could be a benefit to other people? Oh, yes. How are you doing today? How's your flow? Have you, have you had kind of a dam up of the river? Is it dammed up? Maybe with some sin? Is it dammed up with some disbelief? Has your river stopped flowing to others? That they're not getting help. And by the way, the others could be your own wife or the others could be your own husband or the others could be your own children. In other words, the others could be your family that are not being helped by the flow of your river. And God's given you a river to flow over to others and have its banks overflow and give to others. Here's something else. You cannot completely stop a river. You can place a dam across it but it will need to be released by a valve or gate or break through the obstacle. Its flow is going to flow. You cannot stop the flow. If you dam it up, it's going to spread way out and so forth. You know that. Well, the truth of the matter is you and I cannot stop the flow of the river. We'll always have that river in us. We can dam it up, but it's going to spread out somehow. And I would hope that it would spread out to others that others could be benefited from the river, especially I'm hoping that for my sake, for me. Now here's something else. Some rivers encircle towns and become fortifications to the dwellers therein, making them strong and hard to be taken by enemies. And the Holy Spirit is the believer's strength 
and is also a protection for us. He fortifies us from our enemies as well. Here's something else to think about. Number 12, a river flows toward the great body of water known as the ocean. All the rivers do. All rivers do. As it flows by the help of boats and other vessels, people whose purpose to get to the ocean are safely brought to their destination. Yeah. Compare this. Our spiritual river, the Holy Spirit, will carry us whose purpose and intention is to get to the ocean of all the fullness of God and will arrive safely as we flow the same direction as our river of the Holy Spirit. And where is that river? Where is that ocean? The river's in us and it's flowing to the ocean and the ocean is heaven. And we're going to be able to get there through the flow of the river to the ocean, heaven. Isn't that a good thought? Don't you love that? Here's something else. Sometimes... Earth's rivers are still and calm and quiet, and you can hardly tell they are in motion. Because of this, because of this, vessels do not sail or move without some kind of an artificial force like the power of a motor. Now compare this. The Spirit of God sometimes seems not to move on the hearts of men, and there's no visible activity in the in the man of the Holy Spirit, and these people have the appearance of no river flow of the Holy Spirit at all. No duty, no service, no movement. All these do are barely drift. Why? Because maybe no river is being flowed like it ought to and has become stagnant and just barely drifts alone. How about your river? Is it moving with a force? Is it flowing like it ought? Or is it becoming stagnant, just barely moving? Everything planted by a river they have found grows and bears fruit. I remember as a kid growing up in Muscle Shell, Montana, what a blessing. We had what we called the Muscle Shell River, and I mentioned that to you before. I used to go down and I caught my first fish out of the Muscle Shell River. I did other things. I swam for the first time in the Muscle Shell River. I, uh, I skated when it froze over on the Muscle Shell River. But in the springtime and in the summer, when I would go down to the Muscle Shell River, on its banks, you'd have to walk through a bunch of bushes and brushes and trees and everything. But you get in there and we would find such things there that we could eat, such as, have you ever heard of these? Buffalo berries. Oh my goodness, were they good. Have you ever heard of currants? We used to find those along the river. And then along the river, and usually drifting over, even in, over, the, over the bank, over the water, we would, and we'd almost fall in trying to pick them, but we'd find choke cherries. Choke cherries. Delicious. My mom used to have us go pick them, and she'd make choke cherry jam. It was awesome. And then we'd find along the river what we call gooseberries. So you had all of these things, buffalo berries, then you had currants, you had uh, uh, choke cherries, you had these uh, uh, gooseberries, and they were all edible. They were good fruit, and we could enjoy them, but they were all by the river. What kind of fruit are you producing for people to eat and enjoy from your river? Huh? Think about that. Don't miss why the Lord said to us, don't miss why the Lord said to us, out of your belly, your innermost being, that's what he's talking about, shall flow rivers of a living, uh, riv uh, living waters. Now, here's this. Listen to this. A river is very pleasant and delightful and profitable to them who live by it and take their walks by the banks of it. There's no pleasure to compare that of living by the river of the Holy Spirit when one is near these celestial streams. There's so much delight you cannot restrain from breaking forth into singing because of the Holy Spirit that's in you, giving you this wonderful, pleasant, delightful way of life. Here's another thought. There are rivers that act as borders or dividing sources of one country from another. The river acts as the boundary from one place to another. It does that for cities, too, from one place to another. The river acts as boundaries. It separates one place from another. <laughs> you know where I'm going to this one, don't you? A river also that flows through the Christian sets some boundaries. In other words, we are heavenly, and we have a boundary between us called the river of the Holy Spirit that separates us 
from the world. Oh boy, could I take off on that one, amen? But rivers sometimes are used for boundaries to separate countries and to separate cities and separate states. But the river that you and I have is a boundary to separate us from this old world. Praise God for that. I'm thankful that God has given to us his river that flows through us. Here's something else. The water in the river is a running stream. Therefore, it's more clear because it's running than many pools and ponds. A river actually purges itself. If trash, like I said earlier, is thrown in its water, it carries it away. Now, the Holy Spirit is a pure stream. Pure is not, I mean, that's a word that needs to be used as in reference to the Holy Spirit. And it's a river of purity flowing through us as clear as crystal. And his water is sweet and much desired. And whosoever comes to this river is cleansed and washed from all the corruption because of the crystal clear purity of that water flowing through us. How's your cleansing system going today? Are you clean? What have you been looking at? What have you been listening to? What have you been thinking? What have you been saying? What is your heart involved in? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, but we've got the wherewithal by the Holy Spirit to cleanse us from that wickedness. The water of a river is usually good to drink and to satisfy thirst. And the Holy Spirit is used for us to drink and satisfy our thirst, even the thirst of this old, wicked, ungodly, vile world. I'm telling you, folks, the river that the Lord has given to us is a very special thing flowing through us. Here's what I've said. Listen to this. I wrote it down. First of all, a river has a head, and ours does. It has much water in it. And sometimes we allow the water to be diminished. Not totally, completely gone, but lessened. We have the availability of much water. A river is free and open to all. Doesn't cost you anything. The Lord just sends it to you. Our rivers have places that are deep and shallow. We can learn the deep things that he wants us to and the shallow things we can just use to walk through to be able to go on our journey in life. Rivers are natural places of fish and other life. And we have the natural river of life flowing through us. A river constantly cleanses itself of filth. And the river that's flowing through us called the Holy Spirit is constantly trying to cleanse us of all the filth that we have obtained. A river has banks to keep its in bounds. And the river that's, that the Holy Spirit has, we are the banks. And he's to flow through the banks of the human body of the Christian. And rivers sometimes overflow their banks. And when they overflow their banks, it spreads out to others. And others can be refreshed by the banks that are overflowing from us. A rivers are profitable in commerce, traffic, and ferries. In other words, we're able to help somebody and benefit others by the river that flows through us. Now get this, and a river cannot be stopped, and a river is for separation. That river's in you, called the Holy Spirit. God help us to realize the importance of that. I'm glad that I've been born, and I'm glad that I've been born again so that I could have that river. <laughs> Talking about being born. I don't know if you noticed behind me, but there's a picture. That's a picture of my godly mother, my brother, my sister, and I'm the cute little guy, the smallest one there. But I'm, th I'm thankful that she gave me birth, but I'm even more thankful that God has given to me his new birth. I've been born again, and I have his river flowing through me. I hope you do. I trust that the Lord's blessed you with these messages. I'm going to plan to give you some more a little bit later on the Holy Spirit. So much needed in this hour and this day in which we live. God bless you, folks. Let me hear from you sometime. I hope you will.